corporate banking and financing. So firstly, we will understand the meaning of corporate banking. Corporate banking is an area of finance dealing with financial decisions business enterprises make and the tools and analysis used to make these decisions. Corporate banking is referred to as the financing, cash management and other banking services mostly directed towards the large firms. Consortium is an arrangement where a pool of banks join together to take care of the financial needs of the individual borrower or the entire group under common terms and conditions. Up to 1997, it was mandatory to form a consortium when the borrower's fund base limit requirement was rupees 50 crores and above. Though the same has been withdrawn, still in case of substantial limit requirement of party, banks prefer to form consortium to share the risk involved in lending. Various regulatory prescriptions regarding conduct of consortium arrangements were withdrawn by Reserve Bank of India in October 1996 with a view to introducing flexibility in the credit delivery system and to facilitate smooth flow of credit. Accordingly, the banks are encouraged to strengthen their information backup about the borrowers enjoying credit facilities from multiple banks as under. At the time of granting fresh facilities, bank may obtain declaration from the borrowers about the credit facilities already enjoyed by them from other banks. Subsequently, banks should exchange information about the conduct of borrowers accounts with other banks in the format given in Annex 2 at least at quarterly intervals. Obtain regular certification by a professional, preferably a company secretary, regarding compliance of various statutory prescriptions that are in vogue as per specimen given in Annex 3. Make greater use of credit reports available from Sybil. The banks should incorporate suitable clauses in the loan agreements in future regarding exchange of credit information so as to address confidentiality issues. Please acknowledge receipt to the regional office concerned. Banks should establish appropriate internal systems to eliminate the tendency to delay or postpone the identification of NPAs, especially in respect of high value accounts. The banks may fix a minimum cutoff point to decide what would constitute a high value account depending upon their respective business levels. The cutoff point should be valid for the entire accounting year. Responsibility and validation levels for ensuring proper asset classification may be fixed by the bank. The system should ensure that doubts in asset classification due to any reason are settled through specified internal channels within one month from the date on which the account would have been classified as NPA as per extant guidelines. Sections 21 of the Banking Regulation Act 1949 also lays down the restrictions on loans and advances to the directors and the firms in which they hold substantial interest. Banks are prohibited from entering into any commitment for granting any loans or advances to or on behalf of any of its directors or any firm in which any of its directors is interested as partner, manager, employee or guarantor or any company not being a subsidiary of the banking company or a company registered under Section 25 of the Companies Act 1956. The overall exposure to a single borrower should not exceed 25% of the net worth of the banking institution. For this purpose, non-fund based facilities shall be counted at the rate 50% of limits sanctioned and added to total fund based facilities to arrive at total exposure to the borrower. The ancillary and non-fund based business should also be passed on by the borrower to all the member banks in almost the same proportion in which funds based limits are shared. The inspection or verification of securities may be done by the lead bank or members in rotation as per arrangement which may be finalized in the consortium. The quarterly operating statements as required under co-con mints for fixation of quarterly operative limits will also be required to be sent to the lead bank 
who shall in association with bank having the next largest share in the credit facilities should meet at quarterly intervals and fix the operative limits and also individuals banks share thereof for the next quarter the information regarding quarterly operating limits fixed in such a manner would be communicated by the lead bank to other b member banks in a consortium lead bank or or the lead bank and the bank with the next highest share will be the final authorities in case of differences of opinion and their views will prevail in all cases of disputes among the member relating to terms and conditions under consortium financing several banks finance a single borrower with the common appraisal common documentation joint supervision and follow up exercises these banks have a common agreement between them the process is somewhat similar to loan syndication important recommendations as accepted by reserve bank for implementation are as given below the borrower should tie required to execute only one document which will be signed by the lead bank on its own behalf as well as on behalf of other members the lead bank should complete the formalities connected with the creation and registration of charge etc with the registrar of companies as soon as the documents are executed the lead bank shall send a confirmation in this regard to other members by telex or telegram the sharing of security and the rights and responsibilities of the banks including the lead bank should be documented by means of an inter say agreement um, after studying this lesson we should be able to discuss the concept of consortium lending enumerate the rbi guidelines for consortium lending understand the concept of priority sector lending now let's discuss classification of advance as per the norm specified by reserve bank each borrower account is to be classified in any of the four categories as under standard asset substandard asset doubtful asset loss asset standard assets are those assets or can say these are loans which do not have any problem and have less risk regarding recovery substandard assets are those assets which come under the category of npa that is non performing assets for a period of less than 12 months that means they are not generating any revenue since 12 months doubtful assets are npa exceeding 12 months that means they are not responding in terms of income and revenue since more than 12 months last are the loss assets these are those non performing assets which have become extinct and these npa which are identified as unreliable by internal inspector of bank or auditors or by rbi now let's discuss some other regulations and terms in relation to consortium finance first among them is lead bank charge the reserve bank has permitted the lead bank to charge a suitable fee say 0.25% of the limits per annum for various services rendered to the borrower detailed guidelines in this regard are as under the fee of 0.25% per annum is to be reckoned with reference to the fund based working capital credit limits sanctioned by the consortium the rate of fee may be negotiated with the borrowers with the ceiling of 0.25% service charge on enhancement of limits after regular sanction has taken place will be charged on the amount of enhancement or incremental limits no fee is payable on syndication of limits no service charge is to be levied on working capital limits authorized under special arrangements by reserve bank of india for procurement or purchase under price support or market intervention operations etc to public sector corporations or agencies of state government next is syndicate of credit it is also called syndicate loan a syndicated loan is one that is provided by a group of lenders and is structured arranged and administered by one or several commercial or investment banks known as arrangers it is the process of involving numerous different lenders in the providing various portions of a loan it is mainly used in extremely large loan situations 
Syndication allows any one lender to provide a large loan while maintaining a more prudent and manageable credit exposure because they aren't the only creditor. Globally, there are three types of underwriting for syndications. An underwritten deal, best effort syndication and a club deal. An underwritten deal is one for which the arrangers guarantee the entire commitment and then syndicate the loan. A best effort syndication is one for which the arranger group commits to underwrite less than the entire amount of the loan, leaving the credit to the vicissitudes of the market. A club deal is a smaller loan, usually $25 to $100 million, but as high as $150 million, that is pre-market to a group of relationship lenders. The arranger is generally a first among equals and each lender gets a full cut or nearly a full cut of the fees. Now we can discuss consortium banks and financial institution. A consortium bank is a subsidiary bank owned by several different banks. Each owner bank has an equal share so that no bank is the majority shareholder. The owner banks are often in different countries. A consortium bank is created to finance a specific project. Once the project is complete, the consortium bank dissolves itself. While they are not as common as they once were, they are useful when a project involves multiple currencies. Ground rules for coordination between hooks and financial institutions are Time frame for sanction of facilities. If only two lenders were involved, all the issues with regard to sanction of facilities would be resolved by them by mutual discussion within 60 days from the date of sanction by the lead. Where more than two lenders are involved, the agreement or disagreement for sanction of facilities must be conveyed by the lead within 60 days from the date of receipt of complete loan application. The other participating institutions must convey their decision within 60 days from the receipt of appraisal note from the lead. Prima facie rejection of the proposal should be conveyed within 30 days. Sanction in the case of fresh loan proposals involving more than two lenders should be conveyed within two months from the date of appraisal note by the lenders. While restructuring is involved, the lead should complete the process within three months from die receipt of complete proposal and the other participants should convey their decision within two months from the receipt of appraisal note. Asset Classification Banks and financial institutions may classify their accounts based on their performance as per their books. In cases of restructured and consortium accounts, the classification should be the same for ill lenders. Disciplinary borrowers. The views of the majority of lenders in a consortium on a consortium specific basis should be adopted in regard to changing the management of a defaulting borrower unit. Levy of charges. Consortium members should decide the rate of interest to be charged on borrowable accounts. Punitive charges or penal interest, if any, should not exceed two percentage points above the contracted rate. Group approach. Normal funding requirements of the healthy units belonging to a group should not be hampered by adopting group approach. Sharing of securities and cash flow. Exact modalities with regard to sharing of securities and cash flow should be worked out between the consortium members. Another topic for discussion is priority sector lending. Some areas or fields in a country depending on its economic condition or government interest are prioritized and are called priority sectors, that is, industry, agriculture. These may further be subdivided. Banks are directed by the state bank of the country that loans must be given on reduced interest rates with discounts to promote these fields. Such lending is called priority sector lending. Financing priority sector is the economy is not strictly on commercial basis as not only the general approach is liberal but also the rate of interest charged on such loans is less. Export finance is, in fact, available at a discount of 20% or more on the normal rate of interest to Indian corporates. 
Part of the cost of this concession is borne by RBI by means of refinancing such loans at concessional rate. Indian banks therefore contribute towards economic development of the country by subsidizing the business activities undertaken by entrepreneurs in the areas which are considered priority sector by RBI. Broadly, the priority sector comprises of the following. Agriculture, small-scale industries, small road and water transport operators, small business, retail trade, professional and self-employed persons, state-sponsored organizations for scheduled castes and scheduled tribes, education, educational loans granted to individuals by banks, housing, consumption loans, microcredit provided by banks either directly or through any intermediary, loans to self-help groups, non-government organizations for on-lending to SHGs, Loans to the software industry, having credit limit not exceeding rupees 1 crore from the banking system. Loans to specified industries in the food and agro-processing sector, having investment in plant and machinery up to rupees 5 crore. Investment by banks in venture capital. Now let's study direct and indirect finance to agriculture. Direct agricultural advances denote advances given by banks directly to farmers for agricultural purposes. These include short-term loans for raising crops, that is, crop loans. Many state legislatures have appropriated funds so that direct financial assistance in the form of direct loans can be provided by the state agricultural agencies or authorities. The purposes of these loans include ethanol production facilities, value-added agricultural products, livestock expansion, agricultural production, aquaculture development and others. In addition, advances up to Rs. 5 lakh to farmers against pledge or hypothecation of agricultural produce for a period not exceeding 12 months where the farmers were given crop loans for raising the produce provided the borrowers draw credit from one bank. Indirect finance denotes finance provided by banks to farmers indirectly, that is, to other agencies. Important items included under indirect finance to agriculture are as under. Credit for financing the distribution of fertilizers, pesticides, seeds, etc. Deposits held by the banks in Rural Infrastructure Development Fund maintained with NABARD. Subscriptions to bonds issued by NABARD with the objective of financing agriculture or allied activities. Lending to non-banking financial companies for on lending to agriculture. Loans up to Rs 25 lakhs granted for financing distribution of inputs for the allied activities such as cattle feed, poultry feed, etc. Loans to State Electricity Boards for Systems Improvement Scheme under Special Project Agriculture. Now we will study about small-scale industry. Small-scale industries are differentiated from the former by the technique of production. They use modern power-driven machines and employ labor as well. The raw materials are also obtained from outside if not available locally. These industries are larger in size than cottage industries. The products are sold through traders beyond local markets. In many developing countries, the role of these industries is crucial as they provide employment to a large number of people. In countries like India and China, a large number of goods such as clothes, toys, furniture, edible oil and leather goods are produced by small-scale industries. Some of the RBI guidelines for SSI lending are all banks may fix self-targets for financing to SME sector so as to reflect a higher disbursement over the immediately preceding year, while the sub-targets for financing tiny units and smaller units to the extent of 40% and 20% respectively may continue. Banks may initiate necessary steps to rationalize the cost of loans to SME sector by adopting a transparent rating system with cost of credit being linked to the credit rating of enterprise. In order to increase the outreach of formal credit to the SME sector, all banks 
including regional rural banks, may make concerted efforts to provide credit cover on an average to at least five new small or medium enterprises at each of their semi-urban or urban branches per year. A debt restructuring mechanism for nursing of sick units in SME sector and a one-time settlement scheme for small-scale NPA accounts in the books of the banks as on March 31st, 2004 are being introduced. The existing institutional arrangements for review of credit to SSI sector like the Standing Advisory Committee in Reserve Bank and cells at the bank head office levels as also at important regional centers will review periodically flow of credit to SME including tiny sector as a whole. Credit provided by banks to KVIC under the scheme for provision of credit to KVIC by consortium of banks for lending to viable Khadi and village industrial units. Bank finance to HUDCO either as a line of credit or by way of investment in special bonds issued by HUDCO for on lending to artisans, handloom weavers, etc. under tiny sector may be treated as indirect lending to SSI sector. Two other types of advances are self-help groups, microcredit. A self-help group, SHG, is a village-based financial intermediary usually composed of between 10 to 20 local women. Most self-help groups are located in India, though SHGs can also be found in other countries, especially in South Asia and Southeast Asia. Members make small regular saving contributions over a few months until there is enough capital in the group to begin lending. Funds may then be lent back to the members or to others in village for any purpose. In India, many SHGs are linked to banks for the delivery of microcredit. SHGs are member-based microfinance intermediaries inspired by external technical support that lie between informal financial market actors like money lenders, collectors and on the other hand and formal actors like microfinance institutions and banks on the other. Microcredit is the extension of very small loans to those in poverty designed to spur entrepreneurship. These individuals lack collateral steady employment and a verifiable credit history and therefore cannot meet even the most minimum qualifications to gain access to traditional credit. Microcredit is a part of microfinance which is the provision of a wider range of financial services to the very poor. Microcredit is based on a separate set of principles which are distinguished from general financing or credit. Due to the success of microcredit, many in the traditional banking industry have begun to realize that these microcredit borrowers should more correctly be categorized as pre-bankable. Thus, microcredit is increasingly gaining credibility in the mainstream finance industry and many traditional large finance organizations are contemplating microcredit projects as a source of future growth. Even though almost everyone in larger development organizations discounted the likelihood of success of microcredit when it began. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. Consortium is an arrangement where a pool of banks join together to take care of the financial needs of the individual borrower or the entire group under common terms and conditions. Right or wrong? Right. Substandard assets are those NPAs which does not generate any revenue exceeding 12 months. Right or wrong? Wrong. Arrangers is the group of commercial investment banks providing syndicate loans on credit. Right or wrong? Right. Let's revise. Consortium is an arrangement where a pool of banks join together to take care of the financial needs of the individual borrower or the entire group under common terms and conditions. Up to 1997, it was mandatory to form a consortium when the borrower's fund base limit requirement was rupees 50 crores and above. Though the same has been withdrawn, still in case of substantial limit requirement of party, 
banks prefer to form consortium to share the risk involved in the lending. It is the responsibility of the lead bank to prepare the appraisal note for lending and circulating the same within member banks, convening the meeting of member banks and completing the documentation on behalf of all the members and creation of charge with registrar of companies. The concept of consortium advance has since gone many changes and most of the large borrowers are now being financed by banks in consortium. Reserve Bank of India had also issued revised comprehensive guidelines in June 1987 on this subject. Consortium arrangement of lending for working capital needs will continue to exist for operational convenience of the participating banks as well as borrowers. A prospective borrower intending to raise resources through this method awards a mandate to a bank as lead manager to arrange credit on his behalf. The term priority sector itself suggests that certain sectors of the economy are needed to be taken up on a priority basis for rapid economic development. In pursuance of the same, the Government of India emphasized that commercial banks should increase their involvement in the financing of priority sector, namely agriculture and small-scale industries. 